This episode is brought to you by FedEx. FedEx knows running a small business is hard enough without the hassle of shipping. That's why there's FedEx One Rate. With FedEx One Rate, you can ship your holiday packages cheaper than the post office for as low as $14.50 for small boxes. Visit FedEx.com slash one rate for details. Exclusions apply. Valid through January 19th, 2025. FedEx One Rate. Two day retail shipping, one flat rate. Today on CityCast Boise, with all the recent growth in the Treasure Valley, our roads are busier than ever. So what's the Ada County Highway District doing to help with the congestion? Idaho Statesman reporter Nick Rosenberger is digging into ACHD's new five-year plan with executive producer Frankie Barnhill to find out what it could mean for your daily commute. It's Monday, November 4th. I'm Lindsay Van Allen, and this is what Boise's talking about. How is Boise and the surrounding cities growing in terms of the Ada County Highway District and their charge around streets and roads and honestly how people move from point A to point B? I think if you've been here for for a bit of time, you've probably noticed the uh, increase in traffic. Yeah, Um, we love to complain about it. Yes. So since 2020, you you know, the, the state's been growing quite rapidly. There was a lot of folks moving here from from coastal regions, from kind of all over the country, kind of moving to to Boise, to Eagle, to Meridian, all these different places. And what that population growth does is it, it, it puts more people on the roads, it puts more bikers on, on the bike paths, it puts more walkers on sidewalks. And this obviously affects, you know, not only our commutes, but also degrades roads faster. It increases all of these sort of like infrastructure needs. And so, so with all this growth, I, I think ACHD, um, the highway district is, is kind of trying to come to terms with all this growth. And they recently released their five year work plan, which, which kind of highlights their, their biggest issues over the next five years. Yeah. And, and five years out, I mean, looking back in the past five years, as you said, we have seen this incredibly exponential growth in the Treasure Valley. Um, so the question of will we see a similar growth, uh, projections around that, uh, regardless, we know that things need to be updated and changed. I wonder, though, um, you know, the growth hasn't necessarily, it's not like it's spread out evenly across the valley, or is it? I mean, there's some areas that uh, were more rural that now are being developed and more and more. And so all of a sudden, those like two lane roads are getting filled up and uh, backed up and traffic is something we can all complain about, as I said. So how do, how do they think about that? Like where the hot spots are for problem issues? Yeah. So ACHD has has access to a lot of data, a lot of statistics. They're able to see traffic counts. They're able to see where roads are, you know, the which roads are the busiest. And so they're able to kind of use that and see where areas are growing the fastest. Compass, which is the Community Planning Association of Southwest Idaho, they do a lot of stuff with with growth, specifically looking at transportation. They do a lot of population forecasts. Um, they look at you know how the region has grown um, over the last you know few years. And so, for instance, um, back in 2015, the regional total regional population was about. Uh, 646,000. Okay. And today, in 2024, it's about 823,000. So right. pretty pretty massive increase um, over the last 10 years or so. Um, and so what Compass does, what ACHD does, is they look at the, the growth, they look at kind of where traffic is busiest, and, and also what, what cities need as well. So cities are able to like report back to them and, and be like, hey, this road is like really tough, like we need some funding for this. Um, so they're kind of able to plan through all of these different, I guess, scenarios and different things and, and look at what projects need to be done. Yeah. And I should say, of course, we're talking about the Ada County Highway District that only covers Ada County. So, of course, obviously, Boise, Meridian, uh, Eagle, what other cities encom- are encompassed by this? Yeah. Eagle, um, Star, CUNA. Star, CUNA. Yep. Um, yep. Most, I mean, Ada County Highway District, it is unique. It, it covers... The county as a whole, and and there's some differing opinions from folks on on what the district's role is between like county and, and cities. Do you, you know do you defer to the cities and what they need, or, or do you look at the system as a whole? Right. Um, so there's some differences there, but yeah, it does cover the entire county, and so they do need to they do need to I guess work with the the worst roads in the county. 
Well, well, before we dig into the worst roads or the places that they're going to focus on uh, spending quite a bit of money in the next five years, potentially, uh, with this five-year plan and this new budget, I have to ask about politics a little bit, um, just really quickly. This budget and this five-year plan was passed before the November 5th election, you know, so with the current commission as it stands. Um, I'm just curious, you know, if, say, Rebecca Arnold, who is looking to unseat uh, ACHD President Alexis Pickering, who approved this budget, um, you know, if, if she unseats her, for example, could anything change for this budget or this five-year plan? Do you know? The five-year plan, the budget were already passed. They pass a budget every single year. And if, if Arnold is reelected to the commission, then obviously she's going to have some say over the direction of the, of the highway district. So, for instance, if there's a lot of car accidents on one street, if there's a, a few pedestrian deaths, ACHD might raise the priority of that project to like address those issues. Right. So, so yeah, if if you know there's new people elected to the board, they might be able to reprioritize things a certain way or, or a different way. And you know, there's a lot of there's public comment on these projects. There's there's opportunities to get involved. They do change. Um, so. When when you hear about these projects, it's not like a like a final nail in the coffin. It it it's what they're hoping for. It's it's what they're going for. But they definitely could change in the future. Okay, so uh, let's start off with what's the biggest project, the spendiest one, the number one priority for ACHD? Yeah, yeah. So it's it's kind of funny to think about, but the the biggest projects are actually bridges. Um, huh. So the, there are several bridges in Ada County that need repairs or that just need to get built um, or redone. And these are by far the biggest projects. Um, so the, the Fairview Avenue Bridge in, in Boise, that's um, expected to cost, I think, $21 million. For repairs or to like, you know, expand it? What are they planning on doing with that one? Yeah, it's they they need to fix it up a bit. Um, so fun fact, it's actually two bridges that were turned into one bridge. Really? Yeah. So one was built in 1932, and then the other was built in the 70s. Um, and they just combined the two bridges. Hmm. Um, which there's some structural difficulties with that. <laughs> yeah, some, that sounds challenging. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, there's some there's some things they need to they need to fix. Obviously, sure. if you have a bridge built in the 1930s. And you're still using it today. There's yeah. going to be some some upkeep that you need to do. So that's one project. Okay. Another project that is kind of on on their radar. If any of you guys listening have floated the Boise River, you know that bridge right by that like the park to get in. That's the Eckert Road Bridge. Right. They want to do some repairs on it. They want to they want to fix it up. That is expected to cost about thirty eight point three million, and it's a it's a pretty small bridge. So it's 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 a big cost for a pretty small bridge. And the, the most expensive bridge, which is a bit surprising, at least it was to me, is not actually in Boise or Meridian or Eagle. It's in CUNA. Really? Yeah. So the Swan Falls Bridge in CUNA, um, it basically, it crosses the Union Pacific Railroad and it goes over Indian Creek and into downtown CUNA. And it's a, it's a small bridge. Uh, you know, if a train's going by, you have to wait for the train to, to pass they want to basically scrap that bridge, build a bridge over the train tracks, over the river, and allow access to like the riverways, kind of like the Boise Greenbelt has. Oh, okay. That project is supposed to cost about $48 million. Ooh, that's a big price. Um, I guess, I mean, I wonder if that speaks to, uh, you know, that this is in CUNA, not in Boise and Meridian, to a little bit of that growth that we were talking about and where people are moving uh, to these more rural formerly rural uh, spots that are uh, quickly urbanizing and a bridge that, you know, needs to expand and be more accessible and do different things uh, in this era, you know, in, in a place like CUNA, I suppose, shouldn't be surprised by it. Yeah, yeah. And CUNA's growing quite fast, too. You know, you've got a lot of subdivisions going in. You've got the... A lot of meta, mansions, side note. Lot, yeah, a lot of mansions. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, you've also got that, that, that meta or that Facebook data center that's getting built right. out there. Right. Yeah, so some um, industry too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hmm. So that's all going to play a role into into this, into into that infrastructure needs and, and the city that's that's growing. So 
Yeah, I mean, I think about bridges and obviously safety comes to first to mind. Um, and we've seen in other parts of the country what can happen when bridges aren't prioritized or kept up or updated for growth. So, um, OK, so beyond bridges, uh, let's talk about downtown Boise. Of course, everyone is terrified when we talk about more construction in downtown Boise. Um, but there are going to be more projects this through through ACHD, at least that they want to prioritize. So what should people people know about? Yeah, I think a lot of us, you know, get frustrated at, at construction, at road closures. You know, you're, you're running late to a meeting, you're running late to work, and boom, a road's closed. And, and it's probably the most like, infuriating thing that can happen on, on your way to work. There's good reasons for, for why they're doing that, but there is likely going to be more road closures, there's going to be more road work. And that's one of the downsides of living in a, a growing community. Right. Yeah. So one one thing that uh, you know, I'm, I'm sure a lot of people who who commute down State Street from from Eagle or or commute from Boise to Eagle, um, State Street is a very popular corridor. Right behind the Capitol, it's been closed for several months while they do construction work, and then a little bit further down, there's new plans to kind of redevelop from 16th to 12th Streets, which that's basically, I believe, fancy freeze to like the the just past the YMCA, I believe. Yeah. Um, There's a lot of accidents there in, in the last year. There was several deaths. And so ACHD wants to wants to make it safer. So they did a community survey. They found that people wanted to actually shrink it from four lanes to three lanes, make it safer for pedestrians, add turn lanes in there. The district has had a lot of blowback for that decision because they already had plans to, to improve those improve those sections and they kind of scrapped those plans for these new plans. You know, people say it's going to create more congestion. Um, while other people say that it's it's what the city wanted, it's what the neighbors wanted. It, it's right. safer for pedestrians and bikers. Were those plans? I'm just wondering. Were those original plans scrapped in part because of these accidents that happened? That you know, of course, no one could foresee, and nobody wanted to see uh, people get hit and even one person die at that that intersection. Yes. Yeah, I would yeah. say that 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 was a part of the reason, um, a good part of the reason why they why they changed those plans. With an hour before boarding, there's only one place to go. The Chase Sapphire Lounge by the club. There, you can recharge before the big adventure. Or enjoy a locally inspired dish. You could recline in a comfy chair to catch up on your favorite show. Or order a craft cocktail at the bar. Whatever you're in the mood for, find the detail that moves you with curated touches at the Chase Sapphire Lounge by the club. Chase, make more of what's yours. Learn more at chase.com slash sapphire reserve. Cards issued by JPMorgan Chase Bank and a member FDSE. Subject to credit approval. This episode is brought to you by Vital Farms. Vital Farms is keeping it bullshit free. Pasture-raised eggs means their hens enjoy outdoor access year-round while foraging on a buffet of local grasses. You can even find the farm name of where the eggs were laid on the side of each carton. Vital Farms knows you'll taste the difference of eggs made with fresh air and sunshine. Look for the black carton at the grocery store and learn more at vitalfarms.com. So, okay, so State Street is definitely going to be a major focus in downtown. Um, It sounds like that uh, that area that's going to have fewer lanes and have more bike and pedestrian infrastructure. um, When are they going to start that construction? Is it happening next year in 2025? It's probably starting in 2025, but I think it's majority going to be 2026 when when they're doing the most like construction and kind of like getting everything figured out. So even um, still, we won't see, you know, improvements to bike and walking infrastructure for a, for a while. Yeah. And I, I will say if, if someone like Rebecca Arnold gets back on the commission, right. you know, she's quite opposed to the changes. That's one of the, her motivating factors for why she's running for re-election is, is because ACHD scrapped the plans for State Street and are trying to do this new thing. So if, if Arnold is elected back into back onto the commission, um, there's a chance those plans could change again. Hmm. Um, but that's, that's hypothesizing. Um, yeah. you know, I'm not, I, I can't say what's going to happen. So yeah, we'll see. We'll see. Okay. All right. Uh, moving on from downtown Boise, how about in other parts of the Valley? Um, dare I say Meridian, uh, what's going to happen there? Yeah. Um, so there's going to be a whole bunch of changes coming to downtown Meridian area, kind of around Meridian elementary school. Hmm. There's a couple streets um, that are they're going to work to kind of fix 
deteriorating sidewalks. They're going to be fixing gaps in pavement, um, pedestrian ramps, and and kind of creating crosswalk markings, which which help improve safety, as well as bulb outs, which basically it extends the corner of an intersection out into the street a little bit more. Hmm. That kind of helps, you know, it slows traffic down. It, it slows uh, cars down, so it's a little bit safer. It increases visibility for for pedestrians because you know if you're just on a normal sidewalk, you could be blocked. Like your right. sight line could be blocked by parked cars or whatever. Sure. Well, that's give you a little bit more space into the intersection so they can see. Hmm. That's interesting. So we'll see more of that. So uh, so downtown Meridian is going to have some construction probably coming up here soon to make those improvements. What about um, what about an Eagle? Because construction there has been going on for a while, it feels like already. Yeah, yeah. They There's a lot of uh, construction going on in downtown Eagle. And that started, I believe, earlier this year. And it's going to be going on until until next year. Um, I think it's a two phase project and, and they're wrapping up or they already wrapped up the first phase. Next year is going to be um, focused on the second phase. That's going to be focused on an area around Eagle Road, Plaza Drive, Old Park Place and along State and Aikens and Second Street. All um, very highly trafficked areas. <laughs> yes. yes. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and those those are going to you're going to have, again, road and lane closures. You're going to have parking restrictions. But again, a lot of these these improvements are for safety improvements, um, for helping pedestrians get around, um, for helping bikers get around, and and just in in general making the area a little bit better for for traveling um, with with all of the growth that that we're seeing. Yeah, gosh, I mean, all of this just thinking it's always it feels like it's always like safety. And, you know, thinking about people who might not have a car or who don't want to use a car versus cars. It just I I feel like so many times it comes down to these kind of two polar opposites. And um, that might not always be true, but often it feels like those are the kind of the things that are balancing out and trying to weigh each other back and forth. So with all of these things, have you heard from uh, like readers or are you reading a lot of comments online about any particular projects that people have strong feelings about? Like you mentioned the the State Street project to uh, lessen those lanes and, and make it safer for, for pedestrians and bikers, getting some blowback. Anything else that's really yeah. getting attention? Yeah, I would say the Eagle, um, Eagle yeah. stuff has definitely gotten some, <laughs> wah, some wah. comments. <laughs> as I was saying before, it, you know, it can be really frustrating when you're when you're faced with you know, you just want you just want to get to the store and you yeah. can't because they closed every single road leading into the store. You got to park far away and then you got to walk all the way over to, to get these things. And yeah, it's it's totally understandable. That's part of how transportation development and infrastructure goes. And, and back to your other point as well. Yes, there is. It does seem like there is always a debate between like car centric infrastructure versus you know, building out infrastructure for bikers or, or pedestrians. And I, I think it's, it's, you know, people like to like put themselves in one camp or the other, but right. it's also possible to be supportive of both. Sure. Um, so it's, 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 you know, it, it's a balance just as with most of these things are. Um, so I think that's, I think that's just one thing to keep in mind with, with all of this stuff. Okay, so now we've gone over all these uh, potential projects, these projects that ACHD currently wants to see happen in the next five years or so. How will these changes like affect people's day to day? Because I mean, that's what ACHD is really it comes down to, like, how do people move from one place to another around the Treasure Valley? What what could this look like? And uh, yeah, is it going to get better, I guess? You know, I think with with all of these projects, they're they're there to improve safety. They're there to to make it a little bit easier to get around and however you want to get around. But it's also kind of a, it's a snake chasing its own tail kind of thing. Um, you know, you're always going to have transportation problems. You're always going to have congestion. You're always going to have things to gripe about on your drive to work. So yes, it, these things should make things better um, depending on how you look at it, but it's not going to solve all problems. We're not going to hit some transportation utopia by the time we hit the end of this five-year plan. Well, Nick, uh, someday maybe we can talk about that utopia. But for now, uh, thank you so much for reporting on this and digging into the details with us. Yeah, of course. Thanks for having me. That's all for today here on CityCast Boise. 
If you enjoyed the show, subscribe to our Hey Boise newsletter. It's a great way to get daily updates on what's happening around town. We'll be back tomorrow morning with a look at how the Democratic Party is working to make a comeback in Idaho. Catch you then.